When the government made the hard decisions in 2020 and 2021 to put New Zealand into lockdown, it was clear that we needed to put in place broad-based financial support to help our workers and businesses get through. Since the beginning of the pandemic almost two years ago, the government has paid out almost $23 billion in support via the wage subsidy scheme, the resurgent support payment and the small business cash flow loan scheme. Taking into account other related support, more than $25 billion worth of income and financial support has been paid out since the onset of COVID-19. This has contributed to the New Zealand economy performing better than many of the countries we compare ourselves to and ahead of our forecasts. Throughout the pandemic, we have been monitoring our support schemes and adapting them to fit with the changing impacts of the pandemic and the needs of businesses and workers. As I said back in October when we announced the traffic light system, the government has been monitoring the impact of the new framework on businesses and the economy. Overall activity in the economy has remained strong as most businesses are able to operate with only limited restrictions. This reinforces the decision not to have across the board financial support like the wage subsidy scheme available during the COVID protection framework. However, for some sectors there has been a significant decline. The latest retail card data that we have shows that spending on food and beverage services, art and recreation services and accommodation all fell further compared with the same week in 2020, down 27%, 47% and 59% respectively. When we created the COVID protection framework, we were clear that it was still possible for people to travel, eat out and go to bars, albeit with, order, with restrictions. It was not possible to predict how people would behave under the settings or as Omicron took hold. A combination of the gathering restrictions, particularly in hospitality, and people's behavioural responses has seen an impact that may cause some viable businesses to cease to be able to operate. Therefore, we have to act. We have looked closely at how best to target this support. We have created some bespoke packages for the arts and event sectors. However, doing the same for hospitality or accommodation runs into significant definitional and integrity issues. In order to provide targeted support, we have decided to use a revenue drop figure that is higher than we previously had in place. And there will be declarations required to link the revenue drop to the impact of the COVID protection framework and the spread of Omicron. A new payment has been created, the COVID support payment, which is similar to the former resurgent support payment. The COVID support payment will be $4,000 per business plus $400 per full-time employee capped at 50 FTEs or $24,000. This is the same calculation as we used for the transition support payment just before Christmas. Applications for the first payment will open on the 28th of February with payments starting from the 1st of March. It will be available on a fortnightly basis for six weeks, so three payments in total. We believe that this will get people through the worst of the Omicron outbreak, but as I've said, we constantly monitor the situation and we do have the option to extend this if necessary. Like the resurgent support payment, there are criteria. Firms must show a 40% drop in seven consecutive days within the six weeks prior to the shift to phase two of the Omicron response on the 15th of February. As before, there will be exceptions for seasonal businesses. The revenue drop test is the most effective way to target support to where it is needed most. It captures the businesses within specific sectors that are the most affected and by proxy targets particular sectors over those less affected. The Treasury estimates that the cost of each payment will be between $160 and $260 million. I'm also announcing today that we are making changes to the Small Business Cash Flow Loan Scheme to increase the amount of funding available to eligible businesses through a new top-up loan. The top-up loan will allow those firms that have already accessed a loan to draw down an additional $10,000 with a new repayment period of five years and the first two years being interest-free as they are now. Cabinet has also agreed to remove the first two years of accrued base interest from all borrowers who have or will take out a loan under the scheme. This change will mean that interest will only start accruing at the beginning of year three. These changes will come into effect in about four weeks. Finally, we are also extending inland revenues flexibility for tax payments to assist firms with cash flow pressures. This means that if a business is struggling to pay its tax in full or on time because of COVID-19, it can pay it off over time simply by setting up an instalment arrangement in their MyIR account. Inland Revenue has also has existing discretions for providing financial relief for customers that have been unable to pay their tax on time. 
I strongly encourage businesses struggling to pay tax because of the impacts of COVID to communicate with Inland Revenue to see if they could delay starting payments to a later date or if any part of their tax could be written off. Inland Revenue can help with both GST and provisional tax uh, payments. We have sufficient resources in the COVID Response and Recovery Fund to cover the costs of these announcements. However, we have taken the precaution of topping the fund up by $5 billion to cover for other expenditure that is expected, in particular to support the health response to Omicron, including the purchase of vaccines, antiviral drugs, and the ongoing support for increasing the capacity of the health system. As we previously said, the money will only be spent when it is needed. We have the resources to do this because the economy continues to outperform expectations and our levels of debt remain below forecast and relatively low compared to the rest of the world. I want to finish by reiterating something that the Prime Minister has said. We know from the international experience that Omicron cases rise rapidly but then hit a peak from after around four to six weeks and then they drop off. We also know that consumer demand tends to pick up very quickly. Under our settings of the COVID protection framework, people can continue to go out, shop and travel. And our Reconnecting New Zealand framework will see the borders progressively more open. So my message to the business community is that we are providing temporary support to get through this phase. But there is every reason to be confident that this will pass relatively quickly and businesses will be able to operate normally as they have done for extended periods over the last two years.